Right, so MIDI pipe is an incredibly useful little utility and uh, even though it is very intuitive, uh, if you really want to dive deep, I found that there aren't that many resources. So I thought I'd do kind of a tutorial series on it and today's going to be the first installment in that series. So first of all, um, what is MIDI pipe? So basically MIDI pipe is kind of an intermediary between your hardware on one side that could be your keyboard, your pad controller, a MIDI foot switch, whatever, and your software on the other hand. And not necessarily your DAW. If you are using iMovie to edit your videos and you're sick and tired of needing your mouse to grab that slider and zoom in and out, uh, you could assign that specific function to a slider that you had on your actual physical hardware. Some other things you can do are more bread and butter. You can, you know, for instance, uh, convert note messages into control change messages. Uh, you could uh, filter out some channels. You can transpose notes. So many things you can do with it. I'm gonna show you some of those later in the video in a minute. But uh, before that, um, let's talk about the software itself. So. This is the website where you want to go to download it. Three cool things about this piece of software are, number one, it's free. We all love free software, right? Number two, it does not require any installation. You just download it and you can launch it directly off of your downloads folder. Uh, it's not gonna copy any files into any hidden folders on your Mac, which remain there once you install the software, nothing of that sort. You download it, you use it, as easy and straightforward as it gets. Um, and the third cool thing is the developer behind it, he's very responsive. So, number one, he'll reply to your emails, he'll help you out. Um, sometimes I reported what I thought were bugs, and he was very kind, and he told me, no, wait, that's not a bug, that's actually a feature. If you want to do this thing, you need to do it that way. So, I was able to learn something from him. That one time when I actually did find a bug, I think like one week after I reported it, he had already published an update where that bug had been fixed. And he even, you know, implemented one of my request features. I have a Bluetooth kind of pedal board, very simple stuff. It's the IK uh, blue board. Four buttons can function as MIDI switches, but the stupid thing is when you press the button, it sends uh, an on message, right? And when you release it, it sends an off message. But that's not really how guitar pedals work. Usually you press and release and that turns the pedal on. And then you press and release again and that turns the pedal off. So it's more of a toggle switch kind of behavior. And so I contacted the developer. I explained the situation to him. And he included that feature request in the next update. And he even mentioned me in the release note. So Super cool guy, yet another reason to download this software. Now, once you have, <laughs> I was about to say once you have installed it, uh, but of course you don't need to install it. So uh, you can just launch it and this is what you will be greeted with, right? So let me explain to you a little bit about the user interface. So on the left hand side, you have all your tools. So these are all the different things that you could do with your MIDI uh, that I was mentioning before. Maybe filter out some channels, maybe convert some types of messages. Each one of these tools performs a specific action or group of actions, right? We're going to go into detail for every single one of these in future videos. Um, for now, let me just show you a video real quick of all the things that you can do. And this is a shorts that I uploaded to YouTube as well. So in this case, I have these two buttons on my pads controller. I assign them to track up and down. I can select the previous and next track. This knob I can use to pan my tracks and it will change depending on the selected track. Uh, same thing for the volume slider. Notice how the volume slider does not go from minus infinite to plus 12, which is at the other end. In MIDI pipe, you can also limit the range of your MIDI tools, which I did in this case. And so the uppermost position of my slider corresponds to zero dB in GarageBand, Unity gain. Pretty cool. So some other things I can do is um, I have this kind of rotary button i can rotate it and i can press it as well when i press it i turn on and off cycle and when i rotate it to the left and to the right i can select different areas 
different cycling areas. I assigned this pad to launching some samples in the AU sampler. I can apply a filter with this other knob, um, some other cool things. You might notice I have some plugins in my chain. I can activate and deactivate them with these buttons. And the last one in particular, I think is very cool because not only does it activate my high pass filter, it also opens the user interface for that specific effect. And my pads, they have aftertouch, meaning that I can, once I press the button, I can press more or less, and that will also send some media information. And I've assigned that to the position of the slider. So really cool stuff you can do with this. And I hope this gets you as motivated and as fired up as I am. Uh, so be sure to stick around because over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to publish some more tutorials about each of these modules and how they can benefit you. But for now, let's just look at uh, the most basic of pipes. So on the right side, that's your pipe. Right now it's empty. And what you can do is you can just drag and drop tools from the left hand side, right? And build your custom pipe. So these can be very complex. They can also be very simple. And the most simple one that you can create is this one, a MIDI input and a MIDI output. So let's look at the output first. MIDI goes from your hardware into MIDI pipe. So MIDI pipe needs an output to send the MIDI that it manipulated and changed into, you know, GarageBand or whatever software you want to control with it. You can add multiple virtual outputs like that. If you have a complex setup, most of you probably don't need this. I know that I don't, so I can just leave this set to the default MIDI pipe output one. Um, do you want to use note off velocity? So you're probably all familiar with note on velocity, depending on how hard you hit those keys, you know, the velocity is going to be different. Um, that goes for note on messages. If you release your hands, how quickly do you release them? So that's note off velocity. Do you want to use it? Do you not want to use it? Uh, I find that I don't really need this, so I leave this unchecked. And this last option basically allows you to uh, not stop the MIDI flow at your output. Again, if you have a multi-output kind of complex scenario, you have different outputs at different points in your pipe, you for sure wanna send MIDI even if there is an output uh, so that it reaches the next tool that you have and then the next output that you have. But if you only have one output at the end of your pipe, you might as well uncheck this, right? your MIDI flow can stop there because there's not going to be anything after it. More interesting is the MIDI input part because here you can select your actual hardware controller. Now in my case, uh, I am on the go at the moment. I don't have my pedal board, which I was mentioning earlier. I don't have the IRIC pads, which you saw in the previous video. And I don't even have my keytar, which you might have seen um, use on other videos on this channel. So that means that I cannot really select anything here. I just have this kind of placeholder uh, virtual input. but this, if you connect your controller to your Mac, this is where you will see it and select it. And that is going to be the source for the MIDI information that MIDI pipe changes, right? Very important. You have the hijack option, which in my case, again, I have no controllers to select, so it's grayed out, but in your case, it will be available. And here's the difference between using it and not using it. If you don't use it, MIDI coming out of your hardware will become available in your software, regardless of you using MIDI pipe or not. At the same time, that MIDI will also go into MIDI pipe and out of its MIDI pipe output one. So in your software, you will see both your hardware controller and MIDI pipe output one as possible sources of MIDI. Unless you're using GarageBand, in which case you don't even have that privilege. Everything gets just lumped into one uh, MIDI bus that feeds into GarageBand. So if you want to avoid that, which you probably want, right? Because you want MIDI pipes to actually change your MIDI messages from your hardware controller in some way. You don't want those messages to go to your software straight. In that case, you can select hijack. That means that MIDI pipe becomes the only piece of software on your Mac able to use MIDI from your hardware. It blocks off your hardware for everything else. So that MIDI pipe can change those messages with the tools that you wanted to use and then set those changed MIDI messages into your software, right? So that's what you want to use most of the time. Um, I would check this unless you have a specific reason not to use it. Um, 
So yeah, that's gonna be your most basic of pipes. And then in between the in and out, you can drag whatever tool you need to perform whatever transformations you need. Right, so that's the basics. So if this was interesting to you and you can't wait to see more in-depth tutorials about every single tool, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next videos that I'm gonna publish over the course of the next few weeks. And if this provided some value to you, then please consider becoming a channel member. If you're interested, I also have merch. Have a look at the merch shelf below this video. Maybe there's something you like. Right, that being said, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you on the next video in this series. Take care.